So here we go. This is uh, an interview with Mizar Quintus Ortega. He is one of my favorite coaches I've had um, in my time doing CrossFit. He was uh, one of the, the the ones that took me to my my peak in 2015. So um, I want to let you uh, describe a little bit about your background and um, in five words, Mizar. How would you describe yourself without describing your physical appearance? So let's uh, start with the five words. Uh, the five words, I would say, um, um, present, uh, attentive, um, patient, um courageous there's Could one be. missing uh, kind that would yeah. be my last one that one fits <laughs> <laughs> you've got a big heart <laughs> <laughs> cool so uh yeah just tell us a little bit about your background what you do where you're from a bit of story around that yeah i mean that's a big question i'm uh, from everywhere the world is my country um actually i'm originally from mexico uh, that's where i was born uh, when i was young uh, at seven years old we moved to rimouski a small town in quebec i lived there for 10 years and, you know, this is where I basically became Canadian. I got, you know, uh, my first um, encounter with uh, other cultures, with other language, you know, with, um, how do you say, um, I had to adapt, right? Uh, that's where learning the new language, making friends, um, it was important. I learned a lot through that process. I believe that that's where, you know, it defined me, you know, through adversity or through challenges, let's call them that way. Um, yeah. You know, I, that's where I learned um, gymnastics. That's where I started doing gymnastics. That's where I got the opportunity to start coaching as a gymnastics uh, coach. Uh, I also had the opportunity to uh, play the violin with, oh, um, cool. you know, some... Uh, in the convent, on the couvent. Um, and, you know, it exposed me a bit to everything, you know. My dad uh, is a hard academic, you know. He did, um, that's why we moved to Rimouski. He went to study. He oh. wanted to do um, a PhD in oceanography. So oh, he nice. really believed in education. And basically he saw education, physical activity and arts as you know, three, three main important things. And, you know, living in such a small city, it allows us to, to have that freedom of, you know, going to violin on such day and gymnastics on the other on top of school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was things that um, I wanted to explore, to mm -hmm. be honest. It kind so, of became a big part of your life, actually, those three things, it seems. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, uh, when we define... Uh, fitness and individual and you know what's the true expression of the person it's really up there you know who is the individual what are their passions and i, I think at the bottom of the line it comes out to do you get to know yourself mm -hmm. and do you trust that you know feeling of accomplishment or purpose and are you courageous enough to go for it or trust in it or learn to do that you know, I think that's where many things need to come into play and, you know, eventually, you know, learning to fly and trusting your, your own wings, you know? Mm, yeah, definitely. I think it takes, it takes uh, activities like that to, to bring out those things and to, to help you learn who you are. Um, I find that all the activities that I've done in my life, that really helps to to show me who I am and the way I react to adversity, like you say, and the way I 
use my courage and the way I react to fear, all those things, that really helps you, I think, discover who you are and work on those things if you want to make them better. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that's where I will live 10 years there. Finished high school. I was doing gymnastics like a, you know, a maniac because I loved it. I loved the thrill of it. I loved the discipline of it. I loved the process of it. You know, it reminded me um, like violin, you know, it has a process to it. It has a, you know, mm -hmm. it's a discipline. And that's exactly what it is. Yeah, right? it's very structured and ordered. There's a lot of technical stuff to learn. And at the same time, it's very free. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, once you have acquired certain basics, you can feel so free doing mm -hmm. that. And I yeah. think that we're like, you're right, you know, exposure through different things. Also sticking to it, you mm -hmm. know, because it's not true that everything is easy, you know, like as an artist, you know that you need to spend time drawing or you need mm -hmm. to spend time practicing. It doesn't just come, come out easy, you know. No, some people not. it does, but some others, you know, that's why it's called a practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, so, uh, yeah. Then we moved, moved to Halifax. Mm -hmm. Halifax oh, is yeah. where I did um, uh, some uh, engineering studies. Uh -huh. uh, I had to make a choice between uh, pursuing being an athlete or, you know, getting more serious with my studies. And, um, you know, I went for the safer route, which was, uh, you know, the logical one, get the degree get a job and, you know, keep training on the side. I was, you know, doing a part-time um, coaching at a, a gym, gymnastics. And, uh, you know, it's it always had been part of my, I guess, um, daily life. I've been, you know, somewhere in a gym training or coaching <laughs> and on top yeah. of, you know, the, the studying. Mm. And that's where, you know, like, finish my studies. I did work as an engineer for a couple of years. You know, through that process, I see it more as a um, sponsorship program from my employee. <laughs> uh, you know, I was working and I used my, my money to, you know, get more training, you know, uh, wow. pay for um, uh, courses. I had a coach, uh, you know, James Fitzgerald, first CrossFit mm -hmm. champion. Yeah, Take definitely. Note, please. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you're probably going to talk about him later, right? I would say. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah so, cool. <laughs> it's probably quite probably. significant. Mm. <laughs> and then you, and then from there, uh, you went, you came to Montreal, or what happened? Yeah, after that? I mean, I finished uh, university, and I found work in Montreal, mm -hmm. and that's where you know everything started to unfold. You know, welcome to reality, welcome to adult life. Yeah. Right, <laughs> having a job, I was training. Um, actually, I started with martial arts. After gymnastics, I went to uh, rock climbing and then moved to Montreal and I started doing uh, martial arts, uh, Jet Kundo to be more precise. Mm. You know, and exactly. Mm -hmm. Before that, I was into his readings, into his philosophy, you know, a lifestyle of like, okay, you know, you, you want to be something, you know, believe in it and you need to live it. Yeah. Right. So exactly. not only theoretical, but also practical, you know, mm. going through the steps and going through the movements and going through, you know, until it embodies you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, that's, that's the reason why actually I felt into CrossFit because uh, I was looking for a way to, um, you know, uh, get better, faster after, you know, one of my uh, uh, training partners started doing CrossFit. That's where, um, you know, I start seeing the difference of like his power, his speed, his stamina, mm -hmm. and you know, he led me to to trying it, and then that's where you know I felt in love with the principles. You know, at the same time, that's where I got very lucky and you know met you know people that were knowledgeable in the subject, mm. and um, I was able to be guided a bit more, you know, into the scientific aspect of why we're training the philosophical aspect too mm. you know, with that not just training for training you know understanding the reasons of the motivations you know sometimes it's difficult you know when you're sore when you know it's like 
third training yeah. of the week and you're like ah oh, my everything you don't feel like it <laughs> like, why and now i need to do 500 meter rows yeah 100 <laughs> percent but yeah. that was important you know it's important to go through that it is and um basically um at one point i realized that engineering wasn't really where my heart was uh, physically, I was, you know, getting drained, working so many hours as an engineer and training really, really hard as an athlete. You know, I went like uh, to the regionals a couple of years in a row. Um, you know, I was training, you know, very hard. I was putting all my money into like uh, massotherapist, nutritionist. I was actually, you know, fully invested in, in the process. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah at one point the body was like no way man you have to choose yeah right so I wouldn't I wasn't seeing myself staying you know in front of a desk uh, crunching numbers writing reports mm -hmm. and uh, you know deep down this is where I never really left coaching mm -hmm. you know I started coaching at 14 years old and I remember you know the first experiences seeing individuals like kids being you know enlightened by their own um, accomplishments, you know, and my reward was like, look, I, I didn't do anything physically, right? Like I, it was the individual yeah. moving, you know, it was the individual achieving things. What yes. he needed, it was this knowledge of like, okay, what are the steps I need to master and mm. achieve in order to go to the next level and then to the next level and then to the next level until, you know, what's the next level? Yeah, you know, it's a guidance. Want, yeah. So I felt in love always from that process, but, you know, I never really had the opportunity to, to see if it's an actual feasible ways of making a living and help. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, cat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, until I actually sat down and reflected and, you know, really asked myself those big questions, you know, what do I want to do? What do I want to do with myself? You know, how much, you know, we're in this world, we need money, we need a roof, we need some food, mm -hmm. and then what else do you need, right, do you Hello. actually need? <laughs> so that's yeah. where my mind went, and, you know, I, I had always been coaching, you know, even when I was working as an engineer and training for CrossFit Regionals, I was also coaching a couple of hours here and there mm -hmm. at a CrossFit gym, and, um, you know, as I decided to move the switch, I started to take in more hours and mm -hmm. um, eventually I had the opportunity to open my gym. And um, here we are. Yeah, oh, that's a, a great story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're definitely well-rounded, <laughs> well-traveled and well-rounded. Um, okay, so after that, tell us about your background. Why do you believe accomplishing your true potential as a human being is so important to yourself. <clears throat> you quoted from Oprah Winfrey, um, your true passion should feel like breathing. It's natural. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you wake up in the morning, uh, let's say when you were a kid, for some people it's like a, a Christmas day, right? For mothers, I can remember, you know, the day before competition or the day of the competition, you know, when you wake up and you're like, whoa, you know, it's a special <laughs> day. You know? here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't know if you slept or nothing at all. You don't know if you're dreaming or not. <laughs> yeah. Right? Or, you know, when you're deeply in love and you're like, oh, I can't wait until, you know, I get a message or I call her or I see her, you know, or just mm -hmm. things like that, that actually make you feel alive. Mm -hmm. You know, and Definitely. it's just a moment where like, uh, okay, it's my birthday, let's go party, YOLO, and you know, you're drunk as fuck and you can't even remember what you did that night. <laughs> Is that the true potential of the individual or, you know, it goes beyond that. Mm. You know, that's where I'm, I guess, questioning that and how. For me, it was part of the physical aspect, you know, through competition. Mm. Uh, it was also through the um, arts. You know, when I was yeah. playing the violin, I think I went to uh, as high as I could because mm -hmm. that's where I had um, a truth bomb from my professor. Oh, you know? what did he say? Or she? The, she he said, yeah. basically, I 
I was able to go into the conservatory uh, first year, and uh, mm -hmm. I had a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, not bad habits that I've learned over the years. You know, I was good with um, my ear, so I could learn mm -hmm. songs by ear, but not oh. by reading the music. Mm -hmm. So once I would practice, you know, a couple times a song, it was in my head, but not because I learned it reading it, but because I learned it through ear. Oh, so interesting. Some of the tests, you had to read music, and I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I failed miserably and you know mm. if you wanted to go to the next step is like through orchestra through you know learning a song like in a couple of hours and playing at a wedding or like a, you know like as mm -hmm. a musician you should be able to read music and start right away mm -hmm. and you know at one point he sat down and he's like look you know you have great musicality you have great connection with the music with the arts but do you like physics or what else did you do at school? <laughs> what else are you good at? <laughs> like, well, keep at it. Like, uh, you know, violin, you know, play for your own uh -huh. for, for yourself. Uh -huh. yeah. but, you know, I think, you know, he realized with regards of what are the requirements to be a true musician mm. wasn't there. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, those are the hard truths, eh? <laughs> like but that's an important truth. It because is an important truth. Yeah, exactly. I, I love music. You know, yeah. don't get me wrong. I would put music every day, all day. I, I don't have a problem with that. You know, it misses. I miss it when I don't have music around. Mm. Right. And this is where should I be playing violin every day for an hour? You know, mm. right now I have other priorities that, you know, speak to me more. Mm -hmm. you know, but yeah. I'll try, I'll try to incorporate it in there. Right. Mm. I think those are the really important things when you have somebody who who has a lot of experience and they can see your potential and they can see they also know what it what it is entailed if you want to go to the next level and then presenting you with that choice yeah. and saying listen if you really are serious about this this is what needs to be done and it's either you go and do those things or you can just you know, choose another path. And everything that you've le learned up until that point is extremely important in uh, who you've become already. So it's not, it's never wasted. It's, no. it's, it's a really but valuable that's, experience. That's where it becomes like you're asking, uh, why is it important to express your true potential? Because yeah. what's the true potential? Mm. You know, like, am I gonna be an individual that can sing? that can mm. dance, that can climb a tree, that can count, that can, you know, devise a plan in order to, you name it, open a business, uh, fly a plane, jump off a parachute, you know, play the flute. Uh, what else? Any, anything. Yeah, there's like, every, until your imagination can go. And that's where and you need to, to commit to that. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. you need to sit down with yourself and be like, okay, what am I actually, what do I want to do? You know, what drives me, what passions me, what, you know, whatever it can be, but at least do something, mm -hmm. right? Do something that is going to passion or that is going to drive you, that is going to excite you. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like we all have 24 hours. That's the reality, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Within those 24 hours, how many of these you're actually capable? And, you know, by that, we're honest to say that I cannot be practicing jujitsu for eight hours straight. I no. cannot be playing violin for eight hours straight. Mm. I, I cannot even read a book for, you know, two hours straight. My eyes mm. start to ache. I need to sit, you know, stand up. I need to go yeah. to the bathroom. I need to get, you know, a glass of water. Mm. Yeah, that's me, right? Mm -hmm. And yet I can do other things for longer than that. Mm -hmm. right? And there's a balance in there. What, you know, like what people, I used to go to university and, you know, I would see kids studying all-nighters mm -hmm. you know, after one hour i was done you know <laughs> i had to get up you know do a couple of yeah. squats do a couple of push-ups come back another four or five minutes mm -hmm. get you know something to eat that was me you know and mm -hmm. I, I have a hard time sometimes focusing mm -hmm. right? so what are our strategies on that and yeah. what are the true um, moments that you know we really define there right? mm -hmm. Well, and I think if you do these things, the more you do in your life and the more that you're active and or proactive 
you discover it's a reflect it reflects back on you and that's how you really discover who you are and then you can work out what your true potential is from that point but if you're very conservative or anyone can, you can be whoever you are but from your point if you're aware you know where things get difficult then you can uh, then, then you can choose if you want to push them or or back off and push somewhere else and I, I think that accomplishment builds character because of the journey that you have to go through to get there and I think that having character well in in my opinion is that's what life's about <laughs> is becoming more of who you are it's about those experiences you know I, I if let's take the idea of the violin mm. right I love the honesty of my professor and I also you know after that comment that's where it resonated with me in the sense of like, yeah, I love music. But in order for me to actually live from that, it's another world, mm. right? Am I ready to take that world? You know, and then what kind of conditions am I going to be actually um, spending my, my days? You know, is it like, oh my God, I need to practice because I suck at this, right? Or, oh my God, you know, like, okay, I know I can, you know, improve there and there's some things that I can keep working on. Right. There's always a way to, to see the challenge. Right. For sure, there are fears. Uh, fear, fears of what? Fears of failure, fears of being ridiculized, fears of, you know, doing a mistake, fears of like what people are going to say, you know, fears of like financial loss, fears of like we can name them. Yeah. Right? And it's important to be aware because failure is an option, just like me and violin. My dream was to play with the orchestra, do, 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 first or second violin, you know, <laughs> Dream exploded, never happened. But at <laughs> least I worked for it. Yeah, you know, exactly. I was practicing a lot when that happened. And, you know, I need to be honest that that was the best I could do. And I'm proud of that, mm -hmm. right? I'm not in the orchestra, but yet I tried it. I lived it. And now I know that, look, I, that's not for me. Right? No, and you explored. And that's, that's a really important part of, of becoming is the explore it, the exploration and not every time that you go on an exploration you're going to find what you want to find necessarily and it's just a question of adapting and and then you know looking at what you've discovered and then and then choosing wh which way to go from there so that i think is a very significant part of accomplishing and having goals to to accomplish i, I think um, and for me, that was always quite a big part of how you coached me was you always, you know, you had a very stru a big, a structure in place to follow and there were always um, things to accomplish. And that was, they were like, some of them were tests, some of them were rites of passage, some of them were knowing, who, you know, what, why you're doing this and it was it was more than just going to the gym and training or you know going to wherever the gym is and training um so yeah i think accomplish accomplishing your full potential and your full potential is always going to move the goalposts are always going to move it's and that's the beauty of it it's uh it's always a becoming you're always evolving and transforming which is i think part of becoming more of who you are so that's where I, where I would say the importance of it is. Is that how you see it or? Absolutely, absolutely. I couldn't say it more than that. And you know, that's where, like if we look at nowadays, what are our rights of passages, mm. right? As a, <laughs> no, as true, as human beings, like as a male, as a female, mm. right? As a teenager, mm -hmm. as a kid, as an adult, right? I mean, if mm. we look in other societies, a rite of passage could be spending the night in the woods and surviving it. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely a feat, <laughs> a feat to accomplish. Right? I mean, just yeah. staying at night in the woods, it's scary. Mm. Yeah, and you are with your imagination. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, no, definitely. And the most important, not only having uh, goals, mm. uh, but also recognizing, you know, the um, vulnerable moments and being aware of those and being ready to, um, yeah, uh, 
able to remove that uh, mask and be like, look, I may fail. I may make mistakes, <laughs> but that's part of the, the, the growing process. And yeah. as much as failure is present, there's also success, mm. right? And yeah, definitely. both of them can be re real. And mm. until you take the first step, you don't make any decision. Mm. If you don't make any decision, at least one of them is real. Mm -hmm. Well, and they can both be real as well. Like you could fail in one perspective, but on the other side of that, you can see there's a big success in there. I mean, I lived that myself, you know, when I, I didn't make the regionals that year for which, whichever reasons there was many, but I didn't, that was the end result. But you know, if I see it as, okay, that was my goal and I didn't make it, then that's a failure. If I look at what I learned in the process, that's a massive success. It's bigger than actually, probably the 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 success of of the original goal <laughs> yeah. um so yeah i think that and and there's such a, a big stigma attached to failure um but i think that failure is actually a huge opportunity of learning and expansion as a person so but see um, this is where the even the vocabulary that we use or the words yeah. you know like if we think of the experiences that we live mm. uh just like how much testing we do on kids and how much conditioning we do on kids. Like, oh my God, you have like six out of 10, 60%? What, you're <laughs> gonna fail, you're gonna be like a failure in life, you're not gonna succeed, you know? And all this fear ingrained, mm -hmm. you know, as young as, I don't know, what, first grade? Yeah, Seven years old, six cool. years old, mm -hmm. right? Or if you wanna succeed, you must be the best. You must be mm -hmm. number one, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think that's where the language and how even ourselves we pursue um, challenges, mm. right? Like, is it failure or it's an experience? It's a learning process, mm. right? It's an exploration process, right? I must experiment, right? We mm. are all going to fall one day or another, mm. right? And it's part of recognizing what happened there. If I think of, you know, when I start doing gymnastics, I remember my hands like burning and it's like, ah, I can't hang from the rings, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the blood coming down off the because yeah. I ripped off. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that's part of the exploration. I remember, you know, doing this mountain, like, thank God there was someone there to kind of catch me. And <laughs> it was part of the exploration. It wasn't really a fail. No. No, it was like, yeah, you're falling on your head. You mm. know, it just keeps turning. Right, yeah. and you go back up and you do it again as opposed to, well, you fail two out of 10, you know, no. Right, because then the exploration process finishes mm. as opposed to, okay, now you landed a little bit on your side and try to turn more and then you turn more and okay, that's it, that's it for today. Let's yes. go on the beam or let's, you know, learn how to climb a tree or mm -hmm. you know, let's, can you fall and roll, right? Mm. Things like that, that yeah. you know, true potential. If we're true about that, we need to, exploring that you know in that way like conditioning our brain differently of like okay now i'm trying this yes is it risky yes you know what are things can go wrong well this can go wrong be vigilant or you know this could go right you know move on with that fly yeah. with that dream yeah. that mm. so it's all about living and have and making an experience happen yeah because that experience can be a great experience you know yeah. And maybe it's true, like, uh, how do you say, I don't want to say failures because that's not true. You know, it's because, you know, <laughs> let's say you're on a vacation and, you know, it starts raining and, you know, that's where you're going to meet locals because now you're inside. Mm. Right? You maybe discover the best food in the world because you have to be inside, mm. right? As opposed to if you were tracking all day and, you know, enjoying the outdoors, you know, maybe later on that's going to turn out into even a better experience because you have mm. contacts, right? Mm. So it, it's all about, yeah, how, how do we perceive these experiences and how we allow ourselves to go out of those, you know, experiences? You yeah. know, everything that is happening right now, it's kind of challenging because now we're even more sheltered, you know. Oh my God, you know, <gasps> the virus, oh no, I'm, <clears throat> oh, you know. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot more fear around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, yes, we need to be um, understanding that it, there's a situation right now and, you know, what are things we can do is to, you know, be uh, cautious, you know, with how 
we handle ourselves, you know, hands, we wash the hands and all the, you know, I don't want to say more clean because we should have been already clean, mm. right? Hygiene should be there, you know, it's not tomorrow yeah. I'm going to be like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> you, you know, it's like, yeah. do we need to make more adjustments? Probably, you know, mm. I think the world is going to change, but, you know, let's learn from this experience and, you know, upgrade our even life habits of like, mm. okay, let's use this to rest. I'm seeing this as a perfect moment to catch up on sleep or catch up yeah. on, you know, like, let's say creative uh, mindset, you know, mm-hmm. like a uh, little being in a cave, but at the same time being aware of what am I doing? You know, it's enough two weeks vacation, three, let's call it a, a month, a month of like, okay, margaritas and, you know, like <laughs> waking up at whatever time you want and eating whatever food you want. Cool. We've done it, you know? seven yeah. day weekend now what's the next step you know am i happy with this or you know am i fulfilled with this you know can mm. this be sustainable what else do i want you know how is my body feeling with you know this great food or junk food you know i'll need to admit i've done it <laughs> you know, sugar pie mm, yeah. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know it's it's good but at the same time i recognize how my body feels afterwards mm. Right. I'm not, you know, like slapping myself, you know, you know, you should have not done that. You know, no, it was great when I was doing it. You know, like it's the sugar time. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, maple syrup and (laughs) I took advantage of that, you know, but at the same time, I recognize how the body reacts. Mm -hmm. And that's where I understand, okay, you know, is it a life habit? Is it, Mm -hmm. you know, a choice for my body, for my mind? You know, what's enjoying life? Mm. I'm, I'm not a monk and I, I don't know if I had the right state of mind to go there mm. um, you know there needs to be a balance between discipline yes. and you know taking care of our body taking care of our mind you know treating ourselves let's call it that instead of like a cheat it's a yes. treat right mm-hmm. treat for what you know like if you think of you know how I used to um, uh, evolve let's say in gymnastics Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you were going from one movement to another movement to another movement. So your treat was the fact that you were doing more complex things, mm-hmm. right? You were achieving more complex movements, you know, it's that require like a base, you know, you're not going to do a handstand if you can't do a front plank. Yeah. Right? And little things like that, that seem little, but they are huge. Mm-hmm. Right? Until you do them, you, you recognize what's going on. Yeah, And I think it's the same with all of this, right? Mm -hmm. What's a reward, right? Do you wake up and you feel energetic? Is that a reward, right? What's a reward? It can be. If you see that every day, then you're having like a fulfilled life. I mean, I think that what I'm getting from what you're saying is it's if you haven't had, uh, say like for the sugar thing, it's like a satisfaction for your desire, maybe like a, uh, your desire to learn more complex things, your desire to satisfy like your sugar craving, and it's like taking off the pressure. If there's a, a pressure, like a discipline that's been in, imposed or that you're following for an extended period of time, sometimes that can play with maybe your creative side. And your, if your creative side is getting like, and see, it wants to play, then you need to have a back up, back off and like open the door and take a breath and then shut it again and carry on. Well said. It's a balance. But, mm. you know, in order for you to have that balance, that's where you need to have a vision. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right? And, and that's, and, go for it. And that, that's what I was going to say to finish was that it's like you're being loyal to your purpose. You still have your purpose and you're just being loyal to it. You're like strayed a little bit here and there, but you're always back on track. And you you never lose sight of your of your why and your purpose. Absolutely, and that's the conversation we have about you know what's your true potential. Yeah, exactly. You know, what's natural? You know, mm. is it as natural as reading? You mm-hmm. know, like a movement. If we talk about movement, is it natural for you? I think so. Mm. Right? For, for me, body. Yeah. yeah, for you, <laughs> for, me, for us. <laughs> yeah. right? What mm-hmm. form does that take? Well, mm-hmm. that's where we talk about the whys, mm-hmm. right? That's why it's important to understand them and, you know, put up a mirror in front of you and be like, okay, I want to look good naked. Cool. Awesome. Why? But why? Yeah, exactly. What does that serve? Well, I mean, 
yeah, sure, it looks good naked, but mm-hmm. you know, what, what, what's the reason behind? Is it acceptance of yourself? Is it because you were being picked on when you were young? Is it because, you know, you're single? Is it because, you know, you, you just came off of a big relationship? Is it because, what's, what's the reason? You want to impress someone? Right? Is it because you want to, you know, feel part of the group? Right? Or is it a symbol for something else like health? and longevity that's also another thing that you could entertain like just for looking good if, I, if i'm looking good that means that i look after the things i put in my body i take care to do like exercise every day i i wash myself i whatever blah 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 and you know it's like anyway for me at least looking good is not about the aesthetics it's why those aesthetics came to be that's what i think is is, yeah. is really important uh, I love uh, Bruce Lee's quote. He says mm. that the body is going to reflect uh, what do you do on your daily life, mm. right? People would compliment him on his physique, on his six packs and, you know, how defined he was. And he's like, look, I'm not training for that. I'm mm. training to be the best martial artist ever, mm. right? And through that, that's how the body is reflecting how I'm looking. Exactly. Yeah. Right? If you're going to try to punch me on the abs, I'm not going to feel it because he's so, anyway, he was doing hundreds of, core exercises and hundreds of kicks and his yeah. goal was to become the best martial artist mm. right and it's like reading for him and the same thing has to go with us in the sense of like what's the yes what's the definition of health mm. right what's the definition of fitness and how we are okay with that even what's the definition of you know our own true potential like mm-hmm. that's specific to us you know is it having you know a couple of zeros in my bank account And, you know, on what side are the, you know, decimals? (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And um, what was I going to say? And and that's how it it brings you into self-awareness, which is uh, something that's related to my group, the Create Connect. It's it's all about creativity, connection, human connection and self-awareness and the environment. So this is why I thought it was very relevant to have you on, uh, in an interview, because I feel that's real a real center of an essence of how you coach is really to use movement and sports and crossfit whatever martial arts that you teach as a way a vehicle to connecting people to, to themselves and discovering who they really are um, and that's why i really that's the reason I think one of the most powerful parts of how you were coaching me uh, back in those days I I really appreciated that part of coaching it wasn't just teaching me movements or you know the 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 technical side it was uh, there was a lot of interior work and um, that's I think is an an essential part of good quality coaching yeah Yeah. thank you yeah Yeah. Um, so how does fitness and or competition help people discover their true potential We've kind of covered that a little bit, but <laughs> mm-hmm. have you got anything else to add on onto that? Or? Yeah, I think we just said it, you know, with regards of like, um, let's say the, the points of passage, you mm-hmm. know, what are the tests that we define ourselves? You mm-hmm. know, I did competition because that's how I've been brought up, mm-hmm. you know, through gymnastics, through soccer, through, you know, martial arts, always being the, the first or trying to be the first. And mm-hmm. that's where, you know, the mentality... I think should be different because it's uh, sometimes it goes, um, how you say, um, uh, to the other extreme, right? Mm-hmm. Like as obsessive, right? yeah. I must be the best. If I'm not the best, I'm a failure. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's where I'm trying to go away and be like, okay, what do we want to be? We want to be the best version of ourselves. Yeah. What does it mean? You know, when I started CrossFit, for me, I loved it because there wasn't any individual my size or my weight doing what I was doing. Mm. So there wasn't really anyone telling me, oh, that's impossible to do. I was chasing guys bigger and stronger. So I was trying to get stronger and people were like amazed. Well, you shouldn't be doing that. Why shouldn't I? You're doing it. Why shouldn't I be doing it? Mm. Right. And, you know, that broke the mold of Mm. like, let me explore my true potential. Let me see what are my limitations, you know, let me go out there and expose myself, you know, and you do the same because I'm chasing you. 
Yeah, totally. Right? <laughs> Not going to get your ass. <laughs> I'm trying to do the same, right? And I hope you're the best that, you know, you're going to be there. And yeah. I'll be the best that I can be there. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's where I love, you know, my violin teacher. I love actually all of the teachers that I've had were great teachers because they were very honest and they were true to their own practice. And uh, James Fitzgerald, when I approach him, mm -hmm. I approach him because I wanted to get better, uh, not only in martial arts, but also pursue a bit of competition in CrossFit. Mm -hmm. and, um, he was very honest about it. He's like, well, you know, you will never go to the games because your physique will not allow it. Mm. Like you're too small. You're yeah. just simply too small. Can you live with that? Do you mm. still want to go and get the Beat best? yourself up? <laughs> yeah, be the best athlete you could be. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was fully aware of that. And I said yes. You know, because the pursuit was not the medal. Mm, exactly. Actually, I never made it to uh, the games. You know, I made it to the regionals. My best finish was 24. Mm -hmm. and, you know, is it good? It, it, that was my best Doesn't effort. Matter. Yeah, is that, so then it, it was good then because you it achieved was. your best effort. Yeah. That's it. No regrets. You know, and that's right. part of I, one of your questions. What was my best competitive mm -hmm. moment? My best competitive yeah. moment was exactly that. The regionals, last event of the regionals. Yeah. It was 60 chest to bar pull-ups followed huh? by eight overhead squats at 2.05. <laughs> so I finished the first, like everybody was, uh, we were the first wave. So everybody, all the competitors were there. Last event of the weekend, Sunday. Um, yeah, everybody was like, oh, you know, should we be doing bro unbroken pull-ups or are you going to break them or, you know, what's yeah. the strategy, blah, blah, blah. In my head, I was going unbroken. I was going for broke. I was yeah. going unbroken. <laughs> I was going to grab that bar whichever way I could. And yeah. I was going to do my overhead squats. Mm. So there you go. Boom. Start the workout. Music was awesome. I remember it was uh, Go Sally Up, Go Sally Down. I oh, know. my God. For the overhead squats? <laughs> no, actually for the pull-ups. So I was oh, right. doing my pull-ups. And yeah. I was in this talk and I was like, okay, Go Sally Up, <laughs> <pretty> Go Sally <laughs> So I remember finishing the pull-ups unbroken, get nice. my chalk bag, mm. throw it there, and walking. And I remember all the judges would look at me because they were expecting <laughs> there was going to be other people with me, but I was alone. Oh. I was alone, first guy coming out of there, <clears throat> took a couple of seconds, clean and jerk the bar, I had a narrow grip, everybody was doing like snatches and things like that. Oh, wow, yeah. So um, first repetition, overhead squat. Uh, so like everybody was like cheering second repetition whoa, everybody cheer even more third fourth fifth sixth i tried the seventh <laughs> no. i tried the eighth i went down and oh. i lost focus oh shit yeah i lost focus mm. and my body was breaking down my mind was breaking down too mm. you know, i was uh, was i afraid of that you know, moment, I don't know, something mm. happened that moment, mm. and um, I dropped the bar. Oh, and I remember, did you get having, up? yeah, I had a hard time bringing it up, mm. I finished the training, but the way the community and the way that effort, you know, this regard of, you know, me finishing it first, or I think I finished it fourth, mm. that event, how um, people were able to recognize the effort. Mm -hmm. People were able to recognize, you know, what was going on. Yeah. You know, despite any words, you know, I wasn't, you know, hashtag uh, YOLO unbroken. You know, I was just being there. And yeah. you know, this is what amazed me, you know, in front of, uh, I don't know how to call it, true moment, in front of like expression, in front of like mm -hmm. true effort. People mm. can recognize it and people can relate. You had right? integrity. I, I don't know what was that, you know, I, I, but mm -hmm. what that connection with mm. the crowd, everybody was there. Mm. Right? Everybody was breathing for me, actually. They were not. They were both like, <laughs> you're going to make it. You're gonna, uh, you know, everybody was captivated, you know, and I remember mm. that moment. Mm. And it's amazing me of the capabilities of our, you know, awareness and that's where we come back you know was i alive was i living my true potential yes and mm. i believe that i connect with other individuals and i inspire other individuals and 
you know, these individuals came out with something there from that mm -hmm. experience, right? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, that still resonates with me. That mm -hmm. still, you know, brings this, you know, like, was I in this moment or in suffering or I don't know what was and what that was is things that you want to go back at, right? Mm -hmm. Things that you want to live again. And that's the landmark. Yeah, exactly. Just like, you know, the same burn that you have when you're doing uh, split squats, you know, you're like, fuck, this burn. They're like, ah, you know, but then <laughs> yeah. you recognize that fear or that burn and you can be more calm about it or you can mm -hmm. be more aware about it and you can be in control about it. Recognizing, yeah. okay, am I going to be hurt or am I actually just, you know, feeling what I should be feeling, you know, keep, mm -hmm. keep working. It's part of the process. It's part of the, you know, it's part of the journey. Yeah. I think that for me, that's what I call the warrior spirit. That's when you're rebuilding the warrior spirit. It's, it's really like you have a point of reference that you've lived already in your battle, if you like. And because you've lived it, whenever you touch that pain point again, you know that you can get through it because you have. And it's part, part of you being, it's you becoming stronger, you becoming more courageous, you becoming tougher with more grit, with, just able to deal with bigger and bigger things, bigger and bigger experiences and, or not necessarily more intense, but like with more certainty and with more clarity and with more confidence and with more strength. And it's not just that your muscles are stronger, but because of you, because you've lived it before you as a whole are stronger. And I think that that's sometimes more valuable than having, the big muscles um, because you have such a strong combination of things of experiences that you're you're able to deal with things in a lot more with a lot more poise and, and composure rather than being so reactive and I think that that's a very valuable trait to, to develop um, you know I agree and that's you know to me the first place where I saw it was in to the movement mm. right when you're moving right being challenged being afraid yeah you know, I have in mind this kid three and a half years old like <laughs> walking through the beam fearless yeah right doing a forward roll and you know just enjoying the process mm -hmm. right yeah. and I think that's where we need to go back right of mm -hmm. this exploration of like what uh, what passions us or what actually resonate with us mm. right? and being more into those moments and creating those moments. Yeah. Right? yeah. The discipline will come with that. And even when we don't like it or it has to be understood that it's part of the process. Mm. It's not just to suffer for the fact of suffering. You know, if I want to suffer, it's easy. It's easy to go down the hole really fast. Mm -hmm. right? It's very easy. You know, Oh my God, I'm inside, you know, and, and my gym is closed or I can't train. Mm. Like, no, like there's other ways of seeing this. There's, you know, there's other ways of reposition. First, you're grateful. You're alive. You're healthy. You know, let's take care of that. You know, mm. How? Well, what are your thoughts? Are you afraid of, you know, getting sick? Yes. Why? Right? And you explore that. And the same mm. way with the other way. You know, how can I help myself to not get sick or mm. to not get into that mindset? You know, like, okay, uh, is it because of what I hear in the news? Is it true? Right? Mm. Is there fear really to be implemented? If so, then I'll become vigilant and I'll, you know, I'll train. Right? Mm. If it's fear to getting assaulted, well, you know, get in shape, learn the martial art or, you know, <laughs> learn actually why do you have those conflicts? You know, mm. it's not necessarily humane to start punching someone in the face just because. <laughs> exactly yeah. and it's about understanding your environment that you're in i think as well yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. we should yeah. be grateful right now like we're in mm -hmm. canada or at least i'm in canada and montreal oh my God. And, yeah you mm -hmm. know thank you for you know being here mm. yeah. <laughs> um let's see what other questions i've got what are the most important things or qualities you teach people or want to teach people through your coaching to believe in themselves, mm. you know, to trust in themselves. I think that's the, the most important thing, you know, to be okay by being vulnerable, to be okay by failing, 
but also to be okay on allowing themselves to try. Mm-hmm. You know, often I see, um, you know, I'll demonstrate the gymnastic movement, let's say a uh, skin the cat, mm-hmm. right? And people are like, oh my God, I, I can't do that. I, I, I'm not doing that. <laughs> You know, and, you know, they get impressed and the reality of the thing is that they've never been exposed to that. Yeah. Never and there's been... progressions going up to it. Yeah. Let's hang from the rings. Mm. Alive. Yes. Oh my God. My hands are burning. <laughs> yeah. But your fingers are still there. So get yeah, up. That's it. You're not, you're not dead yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So I think it's a question of also willing to be. Uh, vulnerable and exposed mm. in our weaknesses no one likes to be told that you're not good at something mm. right and that's where also the coaching comes into play yeah. you know? well you know you suck you can't do a push-up or like okay let's go back try this mm-hmm. let's yeah. try a plank you know that's the first step i can't do that well what can we do then yeah what can we do yeah what's well, success let's for now? work on that yeah. yeah and from there we'll build from there yeah yeah, exactly. And you just push just enough to give a challenge, but not too much to shut them down. Well, sometimes it's good to shut them down every now and then. <laughs> Depends who it is. Sometimes yeah, exactly. they need to do that right away. It's like, <laughs> told you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? And that's fine. You know, it's like, <laughs> that's the way to learn. One step back, two step forward. Yeah. Yeah, courage, courage. Courage is another big one. Yeah, exactly. It's a very mm-hmm. useful tool, tool to have in a life. <laughs> yeah, but that again, it comes through exposure to be like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm willing to be vulnerable. I'm willing to fail. Yeah. But, you know, my idea or, or my vision on what I want to see for myself is worth it so I can move the or put a step forward to that. Mm. Yeah, I think vulnerability, I think courage only comes from vulnerability. It's like the, on the flip side of vulnerabil- vulnerability. It's like your prize, you get courage. <laughs> but you need to have courage to yeah. do it. You know what to I mean? Do it. Yeah, it's true. Absolutely. They're like uh, working together. Yeah. And, and that's the point. You know, sometimes we let our fears hold us back, mm. right? As opposed to, I'm not saying to be stupid, I'm saying to, you know, understand that fear like mm-hmm. look at it into the eye and be like okay yes you're right mm-hmm. you know i'm afraid of this this and this mm-hmm. you know and there are legitimate fears but before i get there i'm gonna try to put one step forward and then yeah. i see how this thing unfolds right mm-hmm. and that's where sometimes we see the fear is so great that mm-hmm. we even forget about you know, let's say open up a book and actually investigating if that's a real fear. <laughs> no, no, it's true. It's like, oh, I can't yeah. do that. I'm like, okay, hang from the rings, start there. Mm-hmm. I, I don't care. But let's bring the rings down. You know, if you're just yeah. like this, that's cool with me. That's your step. Great. You know, and actually, why would you need to do that? Mm. Right? Well, and why would you need to be able to do a skin the cat? But because of what it brings you in the process of learning how to do that movement, it's just such a valuable, a valuable thing. And, and you're, you're learning confidence from all sorts of different levels. But that's, you know, this is where each individual is different. Yeah. Because I, I would have this conversation with you. You know, mm-hmm. actually, I would have the conversation of why we're not practicing front levers. Mm-hmm. Right. But if it's like an elder person, mm-hmm. right, 92 years old, you know, why would you need to do a skin the cat? No, I mean, no, you, you see what I mean? Yeah. But if it's like a little kid, like, a, I don't know, seven years old, mm. I'll make them do even more Lots things of like that. Of course. Yeah. Right? It's I'll really just great. put a big crash mat there and I'll let them play for a while. Yeah, totally. I'll get tired. Then yeah. come and see me. I'll challenge you. You know? Yeah. Play. Right? Have fun. Yeah. You know? Just be safe. Right? Safe environment. Cool. You know, they're going to grow and they're going to learn, you know, can I do that? Yeah, man. They're not going to be thinking about their hands, mm. right? They're strong enough. And that's mm. true exposure. And that's where I come back to, you know, I think this is where it's a good opportunity to rethink our own uh, values and perceptions. And, you know, let's go back to health. Do I really need to have a six pack to be healthy? Mm. Right? Is that the new norm? Or that should be actually the norm for everybody. 
mm. right? Or is it like, you know, we're doing in the army or special forces, sometimes instead of increasing the demands of the physical challenges, they're changing them and reducing them so people can succeed. Mm -hmm. or like if your life is in danger, I hope you can run fast yes. or, climb a tree or jump or, you know, like do whatever you need to do in order to survive. Yeah. Right? And that's the conversation, you know, as humans, as, you know, people that are, I guess, uh, leaders, how do we lead the community? What's the, the, the example we're showing, right? The, the, what they call that um, life hacks. You know, like, uh, oh, you do the ketogenic diet, you know, and oh. on top of the ketogenic diet, you do like intermittent fasting mm. and you, know, you, you, you shake your bum a bit and that's all what you need to do. Yeah. And I was like, hmm, is it, you know, if we define, let's say, true uh, potential, right? Mm. Or how do we see uh, that true potential? You know, to be honest, what we need to do right now to... Um, maintain our body healthy mm -hmm. it's not that much you know like it's not that much in the sense that i am I, I shouldn't be doing you know back squats two and a half time my body weight every day no not. right i shouldn't be doing fran every day or i shouldn't be doing you know i don't know 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups mm. you know but it's yes about balance what's, and, and longevity that's, that's the whole question there. How do we see ourselves? You know, am I going to be an old 92 years old that, you know, it's not um, independent, you know, that it's not able to go for a walk and watch the sunset and, you know, go fishing or, you know, move, hang from a tree, do we skin the cat? That would be cool at that age. Why not? <laughs> to be able to still do that. But Why that's not? where you have to be careful what you do as you're getting older so that you don't destroy your body, you keep it healthy so it can carry on going. That's, and it's, that's the balance what, for me. You still need to destroy it a bit so that it regenerates. Yeah. Yeah, right? exactly. And you need to expose it. Like one yeah. thing is sure, you need to move. Yeah. And that's my argument. How much do you actually need to move? Yeah. I don't think that much, you know, in the sense of like, you don't need to train for three hours a day, no. right? If you have basic principles of like good sleeping habits, good eating habits, good movement habits, you know, even work, right? Mm -hmm. Why do we need to work 12 hours a day? <laughs> well, if you're passionate about your work, if that's how you feel, then every that's day? Really but not every, yeah, not every day. You understand? We're talking about the longevity aspect here, yeah, yeah, totally. right? So if I'm not sleeping because I'm so passionate, you know, it's not going to end. My passion is not going to end. I can still understand that, look, this is my time to be even more passionate about it. Mm. right oh yeah you asked me to what do you you know what's the present moment that we want to be at and mm. how much more i'm in it or you know because i'm so tired or because i'm doing so many other things that i'm not present anymore mm. right and that's the challenge i believe you know to come yeah. back and be like true to that because it hurts it hurts to recognize that you know look i've been wrong mm -hmm. right? i've been chasing the wrong ha rabbit <laughs> yeah yeah it's no, it, does. It's it takes courage to it takes courage to to note to notice and to admit that you you were wrong i think and that's you know that Activity. point is key that mm. point is key often is like a big traumatizing event mm. you know for me it was uh, my uh, violin professor that was one <laughs> yeah. uh, for me it was uh, my uh, engineering job when i burned out mm -hmm. second one um then i had a third one when i broke my leg oh that I, was recent that was recent that was a yeah. year ago actually yeah. and now i think now is another good moment where we had time to reflect mm. we had enough time to see you know what were our daily habits yeah uh, what kind of daily habits we want to have now mm. and what kind of habits we want to have in the future mm -hmm. right and this is where it's important to have this reflection. It's important to be honest with that because that's what, you know, right now we're resting, mm -hmm. right? Right now we're hibernating and it's important that we use this time wisely because yeah, you know, summer is coming, there's more energy coming, you know, the food is also changing, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, I feel it, I feel it personally and we need to use that energy properly. 
right? Yeah. It's not just about uh, you know, ah, you know, it's time to do and move and you know, cool. But you know, <laughs> you're gonna what? Do a clean and rip your back off because you don't have the good technique. Mm. Or you haven't moved for like two months and you're trying to do like a big high intensity training, mm. right? Yeah, I need to lose my fat. I need to do more cardio. <laughs> there needs to be a ramp up again now. Yeah, I mean that's where we come back to what. Are the goals of each person where do what what this confinement process you know brought here you know what was the awareness what were the good things what were the not so good things you know we saw that we can still live right like we still many of us kept our work right mm -hmm. many of us uh, have food many of us have you know a place where to sleep mm -hmm. and, you know this is where it's our responsibility to bring awareness of those choices right yeah. conscious conscious actions right Mm. right so i'm going to give you one last question there's a few that i haven't asked but that's we've covered so much material i don't think that matters so the last question is a deep one what legacy do you want to leave to this world when you're <laughs> when you're gone <laughs> yeah that is a big one actually i give me your definition of legacy that's where i'm stuck at uh-huh um what is your gift to the world when you leave? That, that's a big one. Um, yeah. <laughs> your contribution. Yeah, my contribution. Yeah. Um, I think ultimately, I, I think people need to realize <coughs> their own potential. Mm -hmm. And the true ability to use it and to explore it, mm -hmm. to embrace it, and to grow it, mm -hmm. right? I truly believe that each individual has a, a unique potential, a unique mm -hmm. gift, you know, and the more we recognize it, the more we nurture it, the more we cherish it, yeah. the better as a society and as individuals we're going to feel. Mm -hmm. The problem is that I feel that we're trying to uh, ignore it, you know, we try to fit into a mold and, you know, breaking from that mold and accepting, you know, that nature, you know, like, I'm small, sure, I have long, straight hair, great, you know, <laughs> uh, I think that's where each individual needs to look at themselves, embrace themselves, accept themselves. You know, we, we, our body is ours, you know, to take care of, to nurture, um, to, to, to feed, to, you know, it's, it's, it's like a plant. Mm. And I think we need to be aware of what kind of plant do we have? Uh, how can we nurture it and make it grow and shine and flower and just be, you know, like, Mm. like a plant you know you're not asking it permission to grow if it has the right conditions it grows and it's amazing mm. so it's just like that you know what are the right conditions we need in order to to do exactly that bring the mirror in front of your face and ask your questions and go with that right trust mm. it so it would be to help people find themselves and appreciate who they are and become more of who they are. Yeah. That would be the trail that you'd leave. <laughs> well said. <laughs> yeah. Great. That's a beautiful gift. Hmm. Right. Well, we're going to have hug. to stop now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the conversation. <laughs> good, uh, good, good, good moments there. Yeah. Yeah. Good meditation, you know, to, to mm -hmm. pursue.